How's it going, folks? And welcome back to another Football Manager experiment. Today, Pep Guardiola at a non-league club versus Jurgen Klopp at a non-league club. Yes, this is going to need a little bit of explaining. Here we have Pep Guardiola at Pep Stover Athletic. If we have a look at Jurgen Klopp, He's at Klopp's Dover. Yeah, that's right. I've taken Dover Athletic, our favourite non-league team, and I've cloned them. And when I say I've cloned them, I mean these teams are literally identical, as close as they can be. If we look at Pep's Dover Athletic, you can see their squad here. Now, I will say I had to clone all the players at the teams. I did run into some issues doing that. So there has been some creative liberty taken when it came to nicknaming some of the players. But there is Pep's squad. If we just have a quick look at Jurgen Klopp's squad, um, for some reason they've been given some grade virtual players to make up the numbers. Pep squad will get players added to them. So just as a little example, we have Kobe Arthur, that is Klopp's player. We have King Arthur, who's Pep's player. Again, these players are identical. Both squads have the exact same players cloned and I've made them as close to each other as possible. That means that even the staff have been cloned. You can see here where a few of the clones haven't been named. Um, this is why nicknaming was necessary. It turns out in the Football Manager universe, we've not quite worked out cloning yet and player names just get erased and just don't exist for the clone. So here we have the two stars of the show, the two specimens, the subjects of the experiment. Who is going to be able to do better with their identical Dover side? Um, worth noting, both managers have 15-year contracts. They are trapped at the clubs for 15 years. Um and they can't leave in that time. So basically, they have 15 years starting with identical teams, a clean slate to see who can achieve more. I want you right now to go down into the comments and let me know who do you think is going to be the better manager and why. In today's video, we're going to go five years in the future. Part two will go another five years. Part three will go another five years. And it is worth noting that at the end of each of their contracts, I've set them to swap jobs. So we might just go into the future after that and see how long they last in their respective roles. Although they'll probably just both retire after a year at their new job. But it's going to be interesting to see. That's the whole point in these videos. We don't really know what's going to happen. Because funnily enough, you can't normally have this scenario happen in Football Manager. Now what I will say is the setup to this video was kind of bonkers and took a long time to get working. So if you're excited for this, drop a like on it. It helps the YouTube algorithm out massively, pushes the video far and wide. Yeah. I spent quite a few hours cloning Dover. Um, it's it's not something that Football Manager makes easy to do because why would you ever want to duplicate Dover or indeed any club? So to kick things off today, we are going to go one year for... Hello? Oh, future Jack. Oh, my, you're, you're my favourite Jack, you know. You always help me out with stuff from the future. What What's up? So you're telling me that if I just run the experiment as it is, they both get relegated twice into the non-playable leagues. Okay. Okay. Well, what would you suggest? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess we can do that. No, that works. Okay, well, I appreciate you giving me the heads up. It would have been a bloody boring video if after two years they just went down to non-playable leagues. No, you're a legend, mate. Thank you. No, I'll let them know. Yeah, by standard work the space stuff going on here phone call from the future apparently if i don't change the budget to the clubs they're both just going to get relegated twice that's going to make for a terrible video so i'll tell you what we're going to do we're going to give them each 2.5 million pounds in bank balance we won't touch the transfer budget or the wage budget the transfer window is still disabled for the first season let's see how they get on with a little bit of money to spend shall we Okay, folks, we're back. End of season one. Did either manager manage to keep their version of Dover up? No, no, they didn't. Both teams finishing, in fact, in the bottom two spots in the league. Now, they had the points deduction. It was going to be tough. Klopp's team won less, scored fewer, conceded more, ended on 17 points. As for Pep's team, well, they managed to get 22 points, which, without the points deduction, means that they would have not finished in the bottom two. They would have beaten Altrincham by one point. Yeah, that is the only silver lining I can find to this first year. First things first, let's look at Klopp's team and how they got on. They finished rock bottom. You were meant to do better than this, Jürgen. In terms of transfers on the ins, they did sign a load of free transfers during the year. One important thing to note is that Dover's starting goalkeeper is a player who they've got loaned in in real life. With this video, I terminated all the loans. So a big thing was going to be 
Who did they pick up to play in goal for them? In their case, they picked up Marcel Versovic. I hope I've said that correctly. They picked him up on a free transfer. He was released by Burnley. You can see here, didn't do very well. They did pick up a whole host of other players on free transfers and a couple of loans. Naturally, it didn't help them out in the end. Also, for people wondering, on the outs, you might have spotted the Pep's Dover Athletic players. These are players where I moved the original player, not the cloned player, to Pep's Dover. Does that make sense? They've not actually signed players between each other. That would be mental. They could have identical players playing alongside each other. Now, tactically, how did Jurgen line up? Well, he lined up a little bit like this. They played a 4-3-3 with Williamson up front, a 33-year-old forward who's actually got some pretty good pace in him. He managed to get seven goals in all competitions. It's not great. And in fact, looking at things, he was their top goal scorer alongside Alfie Lloyd, who they loaned during the season. He looked like a really good addition in the end from QPR. But unfortunately, his goals were not enough. I mean, let's be honest, they didn't really score a great deal, did they? In terms of the best performer in their team, it was Paul Klaus, who is a 28-year-old centre mid who's now agreed to go to Sacramento. Now, I know what you're wondering. If Ben Williamson was top goal scorer for Klopp's team... How did he do for Peps? Well, I'll tell you how he did. He got five goals and five assists, but Pep has managed to train him a little bit better. Look at that, Pep. Just a coaching genius with the one extra dribbling, one extra strength, and slightly less balance. In terms of Pep's transfers, interesting to note, he relied way, way more on loans during the year. They picked up Josh Osterfield and Brad Burton from Huddersfield. And if we just look at their team here, those players actually contributed quite a lot, playing a lot of minutes during the year and kind of being members of the first team. Now, of course, it didn't help them a great deal because they still ended up going down. But maybe they were the difference. Maybe those loan signings did help them just a tiny bit more. In terms of their top goal scorer, it was actually Yanis Dreis, who is um, one of the players who, well, his uh, clone is still at Klopp's team. In his instance, you can see here, six goals, two assists. It looks like he was used as their main striker during the year. And interesting to note that if we compare Yanis Dreis at Pep's team to Klopp's team, it's very apparent that Pep got significantly more out of the Frenchman. I say significantly more, it was twice as many goals and twice as many assists, but I guess it's not hard to get double one and double three. Now, of course, I mentioned the goalkeeping scenario with Klopp's team. When it came to Pep's team, Johnny Madison was the man that they picked up on a free transfer. His contract expired at Morpeth. You can see he ended up playing every single league game. If we just compare him to the player that Klopp's team managed to get in, I mean, it's safe to say that Pep made the better goalkeeping addition and also worth noting it's a permanent transfer not a loan in. Maybe this is the position where the points were won and lost between the two teams during the year. Now I know what you're wondering Jack how did they get on the two managers when they clashed against one another? Well game number one finished 2-0. Pep's team won it on the night. You can see TJ Detweiler and Dreis getting the goals for them. A good little team performance. Interesting to note that TJ Detweiler is TJ Bramble. This is a guy who can play a whole host of positions. He of course got a goal in this game for Pep's team. As for how Klopp's team were doing, well, they played TJ Bramble as a defensive midfielder where he didn't quite do as well. And we talked about the goalkeeping scenario. Klopp's goalkeeper got a 6.4. So he did not have a good game. Pep's team dominated possession and ran out victors in this one. As for the reverse fixture away from home, Pep's team won again. So Pep got the double over Klopp in year number one. You can see here Klopp's team really did not get a great deal of possession considering they were the home team. They had significantly lesser quality chances. In this game, Pep's goalkeeper got an 8.1. Also worth noting, TJ Detweiler scored again in this game. So he scored twice in this fixture. As for Klopp's defence, well, the defence did well. The goalkeeper, slightly less so. So year number one, both teams kind of failed. I mean, it was always going to be a tall order. We're not going to judge them entirely on that. Of course, they're both going to be relegated now to the Vanarama National South, so they still will be in the one same league as one another. It is worth noting that within that league, there's only one automatic promotion spot, so they could be battling to the death for it. We're going to go forward to 2023. Which of them is going to bounce back, if either of them? So season number two is in the books, and this is where I expect things to diverge slightly. We're not going to be able to compare the two teams in the same way that we were before because lots of players' contracts were expiring. There's going to be a change in personnel, but here's the league table. 
And, uh, well, Pep is a footballing genius. He has managed to win the league. As for Klopp's team, they lost in the playoff and Dulwich Hamlet were the team promoted. Now, looking at the season preview, both these teams were predicted to go up as the top two teams. And, uh, well, Klopp has not lived up to expectations for a second year in a row. So, tactically, Pep set up the exact same way he did the previous year. If you're wondering, are the teams spending that money that we gave them? They're not spending it in terms of actual transfer fees. You can see the signings that they made here. I had a quick look at the team. Ben Hockenhull has been a match winner for the Pep's team. He's been absolutely superb this year. He's considered one of the best players in the league. It's not entirely surprising to see how. Um, he was released by Brentford. They snapped him up, and he's been their top performer of course, they've won the league and, I mean, Pep, Pep's done very well. He's bounced back immediately. They couldn't go on a cup run in any competition, but a really, really strong season. And in the end, they finished well. As for Klopp's team, uh, you can see it here. Dulwich Hamlet, they actually managed to get to the playoff final against and Klopp's side lost on penalties. The game went to extra time. There were two goals scored in it, and it finished 2-2. And, uh, well, for the bulk of this game, Klopp's Dover were in the lead until the 87th minute. They lost in the shootout. TJ Bramble missing it. He's been the hero for Pep's team. He's been the villain for Klopp's team. So looking at the transfers for Klopp's side, again, much like Pep's side, they relied on free transfers. The most notable addition was Jamie Taylor, who they picked up on a freebie after he was released by Crystal Palace. He is considered in the media their best player. He's a good midfielder, didn't exactly have the craziest of seasons. And another signing who did particularly well for Klopp's team was Ryan Hill. They picked him up on a free transfer from Eastleigh. Eight goals, ten assists, free player of the matches. Sadly for him, it wasn't enough. Since the teams are about to move into different divisions, we're not going to be able to do this kind of comparison, at least for a year or two. So it's worth looking at the average possession and such. You can see here both teams dominating the ball in the matches that they played. Interesting to note that Pep's team have a lot more possession, but actually complete far fewer passes than Klopp's side over the course of the year. I say that with the caveat, of course, Klopp's team did have to play in the playoff. And in fact, they had almost identical pass completions whilst playing the same formations. It's like they're kind of copying each other's homework. In terms of the goals scored, very close across the entire league here. A handful of teams within one or two goals of each other, which is kind of weird. Pep's team finished second, joint with Oxford City. Klopp's team joint with Dorking, just two goals behind. But here is where Pep's team shone. Goals conceded in 40 matches, only 22 let in by Pep's team. A much better defensive unit than any other team in the league. Klopp's team, by comparison, didn't do too badly. Only 35 conceded over the course of the year, but it looks like Pep's team are just a harder beast to beat. And, uh, well, the overall quality of the squad and their signings, I think, has been a little bit better in the first two seasons. And I think that's kind of represented by the fact that Pep's team were the favourites for promotion going into this year. And if we just look through the Media Dream 11, you can see a lot of these players play for Pep's side. So, uh, yeah, sorry, Jurgen. You need to start making some better signings, mate. So, so far, this is not going the way I expected it to. We're going to go forward to the end of next year. Will Klopp's team be able to get promoted? Will Pep's team stay up or maybe do better? Let's go find out. Good news, everyone. They're hopefully going to be back in the same league. I've said that because Klopp's team have got promoted. I've not yet looked at how Pep's got on, but Jurgen Klopp dominating the league this year. They only actually scored 50 goals in 40 games, which really isn't that many. But in terms of goals conceded, defensively, they were just so, so good this year. Um, yeah, they only conceded 30 goals, which was the best in the league. In terms of goals scored four, I mean, they are remarkably low in the table there, aren't they? They are so far down. But yeah, I guess they just won a gate load of games 1-0. I'm going to be honest, if you're looking for lots of goals, don't go and watch a Klopp Stover game because look at this. 1-0s, 1-0s, 1-1s, 2-1s. Yeah, they didn't have that many high-scoring games over the course of the year. They just kind of scraped by where necessary. And when they lost, it tended to be without them scoring a single goal. Now, tactically, they played the exact same system as last year in terms of shape. Um, their top goal scorer is Bonington, who they got in on loan from Hartlepool. Um, I'll level with you. It's a bit of a weird season, this one. They've still got the same goalkeeper who kept all the clean sheets after I slated him previously. I still don't think Marcel's very good, mind you. And, well, defensively, worth noting that TJ Bramble is still at the club and his partner in crime is Ryan David Hansen, who, if we just look at things here, is another player who started at Dover. So the defensive unit that are doing so well is largely made up of players that both managers had access to. 
Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. I have not checked this yet. How is Pep's team going to have got on? They're not in the playoff final. Are they staying up? Okay, okay, they are. Just, um, they finished one point ahead of Kings Lynn. Oh my word, it's so close at the bottom. I would have been gutted if Pep's team had got relegated, having just been promoted. If we look at the season preview, they were predicted to finish 22nd. So he's actually done really, really well to keep them up this year. Um, financially, despite all that cash they have, evidently um, the media still doesn't back the team that Pep has constructed. Tactically, they played the exact same shape that we would perhaps expect them to play. Um, goal scoring wise, a bit of a wide variety of goal scorers. In fact, Malachi Linton, he looks very good. 13 goals to his name. Um, he looks like the man who's kept them up single handedly with plenty of goals. 13 scored in the league. And in fact, those 13 goals make up almost a third of the goals they scored all year. Yeah, they didn't score a great deal, which is a bit concerning. Defensively, I mean, they weren't terrible. There were teams that conceded way, way more. But uh, I can't imagine Pep Guardiola is going to be particularly happy conceding 58 in 44 games, especially after the previous year where their defence was so good. Pep's team, despite struggling so much, had a decent amount of the ball, 52% of possession. They tried to play proper football. He's still trying to instill his footballing philosophies. And while by the skin of their teeth, it's managed to keep them up. Both teams relied significantly on loans this year. Interesting to note, our first inter-team transfer. That's right. Saul Milanovic, I've nailed that name, has left the building. He was signed by Klopp Stover, as you can see here, at the start of the 2022 year. And, uh, well, just a couple of years later, he signed for Pep's team. I'm going to be honest, he's been garbage for both sides over the course of the last three years. Okay, that is three seasons in the book. They're back in the same league, both in the National League, where they began. Can they improve on their previous performances in the division? Let's go see. Okay, so neither team made it to the playoff final. How did they do in the league? They're not at the bottom, and in fact, wow. Okay, they finished 5th and 7th. Does 7th get playoffs? I think 7th does get playoffs. Wait, did they play against each other in the playoffs? Oh, we have to check this immediately. If we go to first round, uh, they both won in the first round. They got to the semi-finals and they both lost against Woken and Crawley respectively. But that is surprising that they've done so well. The season preview had Klopp's team down in 15th, Pep's team in 11th. I'm just wondering how much the wage structures of the two teams differ at this point. So Pep's team on 720k per year, Klopp's side, £1.2 million. Pounds. So Klopp's team spending way, way more on wages than Pep's side. If we look at that in terms of how that relates to the rest of the division, in terms of salaries per year, Klopp's side down in 17th, Pep's team by comparison in 21st. I'll tell you what, I am mega impressed by what Pep's team have managed to achieve. After narrowly avoiding the drop, to go and get in the playoffs is a mean feat. Their key player, if you're wondering, is Jordan Hackett, who I feel like I've signed before in a football manager's save game. They picked him up from Tottenham as a free transfer. He is a very, very good player for this level. Neither team spending a load of money. You can see here Pep's team largely relying on free transfers and such. And it's a very similar story over on the Klopp side of things, although they've not actually got rid of any players. They're just signing more and more. I suspect that might be why the wages are higher. It's not that they've actually got like more expensive players. It's just they've got more players and Klopp is just hoarding them. Yeah, I'm not sure about a 33-man squad, Jürgen, but you do you. If you're wondering who Klopp Stover's key player is, it's currently Connor Bradley, who they've got on loan from West Brom. He is not a bad right back at this level, although his average rating of 6.97 isn't that impressive. But the big question I know we're all wondering is, how did they do when they played against one another? Well... The first game wasn't a particular classic. It finished 1-1 between Dover and Pep's Dover. You can see here how they got on. In the end, Linton scored in the fourth minute. Dalby then scored for Klopp's team. And, uh, well, from there, the next 83 minutes, nothing happened and it finished 1-1. And it's just as spicy in the second game because uh, it finished 1-1 again. On this occasion, Pep's team perhaps had the better of the play as the home side. They definitely had more of the ball. But, yeah, two... 1-1 one, one draws. And it's not a free-flowing goal-scoring derby where both teams properly go for it. Um, it's a footballing chess battle that's a little slow played out and doesn't really result in a lot of fireworks. Still, though, give credit to both managers. If you were doubting their ability after the first few years, 
Both had exceptional years this season. Looking at things, Klopp's team did finish one point ahead in the regular league standings. And Klopp's team actually had a really good defensive record. They had the best defence in the league. Pep's team didn't concede that many more goals. And in terms of the goal scoring four... Um, well, neither team shone massively in this one. It was mostly about both sides' defensive performances. So after four years, some pretty interesting stuff happening here. I questioned how good the manager AI was after the first couple of years. This most recent season has restored a little bit of faith for me that this could actually end in a beautiful thing where they're battling in the, well, maybe not the championship, but maybe battling in League 2 in a year or two's time. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, part 2 will be coming your way soon. If there's anything I didn't cover in this video that you'd like to see me cover in the next couple of parts, please do let me know. I've got a, quite a big editing job on my hand. I've never really done an experiment like this, and there was so much happening, it's kind of difficult to spot it all and then vacuum pack it into a nicely edited video that isn't like an hour long of delving into all the details. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. As I said at the start of things, this took a lot of work. So if you have enjoyed things, do drop a like on it. We'll be back again with part two in the not so distant future. If you're new around here, check out the other experiment videos we've done on the channel. There is a special playlist section now on my YouTube channel page. If you go to my channel, um, you'll be able to find it. We have a few different videos like this one that we've already done in nice little playlists for you to binge watch. As I said, part two is coming your way soon. You're not going to want to miss it. And well, until next time, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.